Alrighty, sorry about that everyone. That's interesting stuff. Let's see who's back. Welcome back. Sorry, sorry my hair's gone all fluffy everywhere. Hello, it's like a mushroom. Hey. Alright, so let's get back to it. As we were saying, we have, just to clarify what we were doing. Hey, me, 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 me. Q Electron, everyone's here. Catherine, the whole family, great to see you. These lectures are proving insane. You know, in the last couple of weeks, we're up to almost as many followers as we are on Gabsmack, which took like three months. So clearly there is a need for quantum mechanics. So what we did was this was the equation and we made u equal to x minus a. And by doing that, we got this instead, u plus a all squared minus lambda u squared. And then that expanded to this which then allowed us to make all these equations u squared that 2a that and then a and that's where we were so let us commence plus <laughs> no worries my dear you can be as loud or as quiet as you like you are always welcome here a squared e to the minus lambda u squared du and that one becomes quite easy now because this one of these is an even function uh, oh hold on a sec it should be 2au i stuffed that up here u a 2 a u should be 2 a u yeah uh and, it, and i forgot to put the bloody integrals bugger 2 a u and that's minus infinity to infinity and <laughs> minus infinity to infinity there we go that makes more sense this one is an even function because we've got u and this one you'll just learn over time when you have the variable multiply by e to the minus lambda variable squared that here is an even function and because it's even when you integrate an even function across negative and positive sides because it's even like a mirror image they cancel out and you get zero so this one's going to be zero all right and so this is going to equal a outside of and that's going to be 1 over 2 pi, sorry, 1 over 2 lambda by the square root of pi over lambda. Plus, that's going to be 0. And then we got this one here, which is the same as what we did before, uh, which was a squared uh, pi over lambda square root. Alrighty. Oh, I missed someone's comment. Sorry about that. Alrighty, so A, and then we've got all of that, which means that an A equals from memory, let me check what A equals, A equals, come on Gabby, get your head together, pi, uh, sorry, lambda on pi, A is lambda on pi, that's right, so A is lambda on pi, which means that's going to cancel out there, because lambda pi times that, square root of lambda on pi, it's going to cancel out here, and it's going to cancel out here. So you're just going to get 1 over 2 lambda plus a squared. Perfect, that's exactly what the answer is. Which equals 1 over 2 lambda plus a squared. Bingo, that's the answer. So the variance, the variance, a hey, fancy flock, long time. 1 over 2 lambda plus a squared, that's the variance. So remember, if we're looking for the particle, okay, we're looking for the particle, right? We know that we're going to be looking somewhere in between here. That will give us the greatest chance of finding it. And this length is, so this length here, I arch three today, not long, um, is one over two by the wavelength plus the angular momentum squared, or angular velocity, sorry. So that there will tell us where to find the particle, which is pretty, which is pretty cool. So that becomes like a gen, this is more of a general abstract uh, version of what's going on. All right, so that's that. Now, we're gonna go theta squared. So, theta squared, which is the, this is now the standard, we want, this is the square of the standard deviation. And we know that that equals x squared 
which is what we just found, minus the first one we found, which was the average distance, right? All squared, which equals, and we found this before, we got that this one here, we just solved that, and that was a squared plus one over two times the wavelength. And then we want to minus x all squared. And what did we get for x, if anyone remembers? x equals a. Oh yeah, it's right here. I'm going back to get my social degree mechanic and doing this math may help. Oh, that's awesome. So a, so we got that the average for a for that was a. So that squared is a squared. Good on you, man. More knowledge is always better. That minus that, which is, should just leave this. So therefore, that squared is going to equal, because those cancel out 1 over 2 times the lambda. So therefore, the standard deviation equals 1 over 2 lambda square rooted. There you go. There's the standard deviation. The square root of 1 over 2 by the wavelength is the standard deviation. So what that means is that the square root here, that means that 86% chance of finding the particle will be within here and here of the average. 1 over 2 by the wavelength square rooted. And then that's where you get like an 86% chance of finding the particle, which is important, obviously. You want to know where you can find the damn thing. Alrighty. So C, use your results in A and B. Sorry, what have I done? I'll sketch the graph of rho of x. Well, now we can sketch the graph, which is pretty awesome. So rho of x was the Gaussian distribution, which was A, just as to remind everyone, it was A, E to the minus lambda, X minus A, all squared. Um, all right. That, and we, we were able to solve because we know that A was, I think it was pi on lambda, wasn't it? A is, no, it was lambda on pi, square root of lambda on pi. Ready for graph, damn straight. Square root of lambda over pi, E to the minus lambda, X minus A squared. All right, so that was the graph. So what we can do is we know that this is the maximum amplitude. Uh, let's see what else we know about this graph. We would say that the maximum would be the wavelength, I would suggest. So we have A and we have X. Okay. So, this here is x, up here is p of x. That's here, and we know that the peak is at lambda, which is the wavelength, and it will be where it's equal to a. Uh, another bot, block McDuda. Welcome back, brother. All right, so here we have a, and we know that it is going to tend to infinity, p for potential, ah, p for... Uh, row for you could say potential or probability yeah absolutely absolutely and that should look like that and asymptotic at zero so it would at infinity this would become zero so it'll look something like that it's exactly what you would expect to see excellent all right that's done now we want problem 1.5 All right, let's do it. This should become easier now because we're basically repeating our patterns. So what we want to do is we're going to get a wave function. And this is a one-dimensional wave function, which you've seen many, many times now in our last lectures. And when I say one-dimensional, it's one-dimensional plus time. So one space dimension and one time dimension, which makes it a two-dimensional equation. And that is going to equal a e to the minus lambda absolute value of x, e to the minus i, which is square root of negative 1, flip it, oh, you want me to flip the camera, uh, becomes really hard for me to hold, that's the only problem, I tried it before, which I really am sorry about, unless I go like that, maybe that'll work, I'll try this, 
Yeah. Minus I omega T. All right. There's the omega. Yeah, it's becoming too difficult. I know. I got to. I'll have to get a pod and stuff. But as I get more subscribers to Patreon, so everyone go to Patreon and we can make these better. And I'll credit you, and you'll get obviously much more private, many more private videos. All right. We want to normalize it first. Okay, let's normalize this. So, to normalize, what we want to do is say on the list. <laughs> what we want to do. Is, I know the feeling. I have many things on my list. <laughs> I'm just going to throw the list away at the end <laughs> of my life. I'll be like, yeah, didn't achieve any of that. All right, so um, we're going to say that we want to normalize. So we say the integral of the function. Uh, and let me have a look here. Uh, and it's psi, absolute value of psi, all squared, dx, and it's from 0 to infinity, um, and it's, if it's an even function, I, that I never wrote down, <laughs> uh, so 2 times that equals 1. All right, you could say minus infinity to infinity, or you can say 2 times 0 to infinity. This is, this is probably what you want, because it's an absolute value. Absolute value, if you do it if you do absolute value and have minus infinity to infinity, it becomes zero because minus infinity absolute value becomes infinity. So infinity to infinity is basically nowhere. You know, if you're you're looking for it between nothing and nothing, you'll end up with with zero. So you can make it zero to infinity and times it by two. All right? It's like um, to just quick. I don't normally explain these ones, but this one's worth it. I would say. Let's say you have here is here is a smack <laughs> let's say this side this side is positive and this side is negative right on it and that's a mirror so this is a mirror right and that's re that's reflecting this all right that means if you add them together one's opposite to the other so you you'll get zero right so what you want to do is you get this side put it on this side and make it positive and then you'll actually get the answer. So therefore, that's why we're doing 2 times that, because 0 to infinity is only this side, right? And we say 2 times that is the whole thing. All right, that's basically what we're doing. So that equals 2 by 0 to infinity of, and now we're going to put that equation and square it. Absolute value of that squared. So that's going to be absolute value of A squared, and then this section squared is e to the minus 2 lambda absolute value of x and this is the imaginary section that's the that's the other dimension section when you square it you get 1 so that squared is 1 so you're going to be left with this that's what you're left with which is pretty damn awesome if you ask me all right so now we want to integrate this so let's integrate this bastard that means that's going to equal 2 to the a squared because absolute value of a is positive and if you square a positive it's positive so you just have to leave it like that 2 a squared integral of 0 to infinity of e to the minus 2 lambda x dx so that there is going to equal we need to integrate that so that's going to be 2 a squared and the integral of that how would we do that e to the minus 2x that should be that should be if I'm right hmm it should be times 1 over minus 2 lambda e to the minus 2 lambda x 0 to infinity. Alright, because now if I derive that, yeah, that works. So now, if I put 0 in here, that's going to become 1. If I put infinity, that's going to become 0. So that, let me go to the next page. We're going to expand that, which equals 2a squared, and it's going to be... Uh, think, 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 think. 
uh, 1 over 2 lambda e to the minus 2 lambda x and that's infinity minus 1 over 2 lambda e to the minus 2 lambda x and this one here is to 0. All right, so basically it's that minus that inside the brackets multiplied by this. If I put infinity in here, e to the minus infinity times anything is zero. All right, if anyone's done sort of entry-level calculus. So this is going to be zero. Are you confirming infinity and beyond? Oh, yeah, there's multiple infinities. We know that already. That's actually a good point. I'll quickly bring that point up since you are a fancy flock. The amount of numbers between 1 and 2 is infinite. Right? Because you have 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.11, 1 1 1 1.1111. 1 you can keep going forever. You'll never reach 2. Right? But the amount of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 are also infinite. So you have an infinite amount of infinities right? already. And that's called uncountable. So that's greater than any infinity you can think of. There you go. All right. So that's... If I put e to the minus 0, that's going to become 1. So that's going to become 1 of and beyond. <laughs> yes, you're right. That's the easier way of saying it. Uh, now, let me think here. Uh, what have I missed here? Are we doing your homework? <laughs> Good question. Yes, <laughs> the answer is yes. Um, all right. So let's have a let's have a look here. I've done something that's minus there. That's where I made the mistake. I knew I made a mistake somewhere. So that's a minus, so zero. That's minus that, and minus minus is positive. So that, that cancels out, and that becomes positive. Say 32 gigs is back, so that's going to become positive. E to the zero is one, so you're just going to be left with this. One over two pi. Welcome back, my dear. And the twos cancel out, so we should get a squared over lambda. Yes, which equals a squared over lambda which implies that a squared over lambda equals 1, therefore a squared equals lambda, and therefore a equals root lambda. There you go, problem solved. We've now solved for a in that equation. So now, after all that work, we have discovered that this wave, right, this wave, thank you very much, equals, right, root lambda, e to the minus lambda x, absolute value of x, right? e to the minus i, which is the square root of negative 1, <laughs> math yuck, <laughs> omega t. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. You should definitely go surfing somewhere. All right. So now we know that this is the wave function. So, so this is how we were able to build mobile phones. Am I a teacher? I am at the moment, <laughs> right now. <laughs> Um, I've been a tutor for a long time, yeah. Alrighty, so that xt uh, is this. Now, this is only one dimension, so this wave is only two-dimensional instead of four-dimensional. Like in real life, these waves are four-dimensional. Um, so, that means that now, if we have the angular uh, speed of the particle, we have the time that we're looking for the particle, and we have the wavelength of this function, then we'll be able to find the particle, or at least the average, this is the average location of the particle. Right? And the other way around, if we have the average location of the particle, then we could find out what time it should be in that location, based on this function. And without that, we would never have quantum computing, or mobile phones, or Pentium computers. <laughs> so now we're going to determine the expectation values. All right, expectation values of x and x squared. So, this is the expectation value. This means where we should likely find x. That would be convenient here. Yeah. We will likely find x. Oops. All right. Basically, where would we likely find it? We would likely find it at the integral of x, and that's psi, the wave function, squared dx. So it's very similar to the first equation. It's just the first equation only had that part in there. Sorry, that, that, that part without the x. But now we've got the x. Because now we're going to find this. And that should be that should be an... It should be an odd function. 
Okay, if it's an odd function, so that equals from minus infinity to infinity, it's an odd function. So that means we can go back to minus infinity and infinity. They won't, they won't actually cancel out. And it's sort of like this. If you remember, that was an even function, right? That's an even function. An odd function would be like this. Imagine looking in a funny mirror, yeah, where your reflection would actually come down here. Okay, so instead of being even, <laughs> that would be odd. So your reflection would be over there, which would be really weird. So if you walk down here, your reflection would be down there, or up there actually, <laughs> you know? So it's a, that's a weird mirror. Circus mirror, exactly. Hey, supernova, welcome back. Alrighty. So, um, let's do this. And now we have the function. So we can say that it is x... And we're going to put, we should be able to put, uh, uh, where are we, um, a squared outside. Okay. And we know what a is now anyway. Uh, and then x e to the minus, and we've got to square it like we did last time, 2 lambda x. Okay. And then dx. And that's an odd function, and we know that when we integrate this, uh, where are we here? Um, that will come out as, uh, where am I? That's, we should integrate that by parts, actually. All right, let's do it. We're going to do it the long way. We're going to integrate by parts. So we can say, let... Uh, u equal um, x du equals dx and we can say that dv equals e to the minus 2 lambda x and so if we integrate that we're going to say v you're going to see what I'm doing in a sec I'm just creating these these new new variables which are related to the old ones uh, equals minus 1 over 2 lambda e to the minus 2 lambda x. This is integration by substitution. All right. So now we're going to say that the integral by substitution equals u v minus the integral of v du. Right. That's the integral. So u and v, x and v, which will be, so which equals x by that, which is minus x over 2 lambda e to the minus 2 lambda x. We don't have to do this for physics, but this is for mathematics. You'll have to know how to do this, right? Okay, u plus me equals good time. Hey, hey, Karen, welcome back. <laughs> you are so funny. You remind me of, like, you know, being at the back of the classroom. <laughs> uh, you're like, hey, hey, what we do at the back of the classroom, hey, hey. All right, minus the integral of V du, which is that, that, which is, um, so minus the integral of V du, which is minus e to the minus 2 lambda x over 2 lambda, absolute value of x, dx. And that... Right. Oh, and this is also from minus infinity to infinity. Alrighty, you were naughty at the back of the class. I was I was kicked out quite a lot at school actually. I didn't do very well at school at all. But that's before I was diagnosed with autism and learned how to function properly. So, wasn't the best. Um, okay, so minus infinity to infinity, which is going to be minus x over 2 lambda e to the minus 2 lambda x so nothing's changed on this one I'm just going to keep it as is for now and then I'm going to they didn't understand you like I do <laughs> you are so funny and the integral of this those become positive and then if we integrate, it becomes negative again. So that's going to be minus. And then that over that, that's going to be 4 lambda squared. So 1 
over 4 lambda squared um, e to the minus 2 lambda x and that's also from minus infinity to infinity alrighty now we're getting somewhere well this one here if I put that in there that's going to become zero if I put that in there that's going to become infinity positive infinity and if I put this in here that's positive infinity positive infinity minus positive infinity is zero if I put that in there it's zero so that equals zero the whole thing equals zero there you go done so that equals zero problem solved so therefore the variance of x equals zero interesting but that's exactly what you'd expect because if you look at the particle here's the graph this is the zero location right you would expect that the average of the past location will be at the zero point it's exactly what you'd expect because this is the center and so it's the average <laughs> parts of the particle will be on the negative side parts on the positive side if you're looking for it so now let's do x squared alrighty this is um, a lot more time consuming than I thought it would be I might have to stop this and then do a bit more later or tomorrow because so unfortunately until we get enough subscribers I have to go to work well that is just nothing equals 42 <sighs> all that work and the answer was zero too funny all right now we want x squared so that is going to equal the integral from minus infinity to infinity a squared um x squared and then we've got the wave function again squared which is e to the minus two lambda x dx because the complex part disappears all right, and you would expect that to happen. You would expect the complex part of the equation, the imaginary part, to disappear because you're looking for a physical particle. So if there's a physical particle, then it, then it has to be, the answer has to be a real number, not a complex imaginary number, right? A multidimensional number. It has to exist in this universe. In other words, not in another universe, which is what the complex mathematics suggests. If anyone's done complex numbers, you know, square root of negative one type of thing. Alrighty, so let's do this. Now we're going to integrate this bastard. So let's go. Uh, x squared. Let's integrate. Oh, this one's going to be a biatch. This is going to take me three pages to integrate. Oh, no. All right, let's do it. So um, integral of that is going to be... Uh, it is... Well, first of all, that's an even function. And because it's an even function, it's going to be the mirror. It's going to be like this. It's going to be like that. So we have to take half of the integral for from 0 to infinity instead of minus infinity to infinity. We have to go 0 to infinity, and then we have to times it by 2. And that's what we're going to do here. So that's going to be 2a squared, 0 to infinity of x squared e to the minus 2 lambda x dx all right now we're going to integrate by parts just like we did before but we're going to have to do it twice it's going to be fun so let u equal um x squared oh can that work i don't think that'll work no that won't work Hmm, let me think of another way to solve this. Actually, there is another way to solve this. Let u squared equal x squared. Therefore, 2u equals 2x dx. Uh, 2u du. Did you find the one yet? Oh, good question. I I have, but it's a very, very slow process, unfortunately. So who knows? It's moving along very slowly. We may be spending the day together, maybe in a couple of weeks, and we'll see how we go. Um, 
Well, it's the same thing. So let u equal x. All right. Let me start again. u equals x. So therefore, du equals dx. All right. That's that's done. Hmm. No, let u equal x squared. That's what I was supposed to do. So du equals 2x dx. Okay, let me start again. Jeez, every time. So let we're gonna what I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna re rename this to do the um to integrate it to make it simple. Boom. See how we go. Let uh, x squared. Where are we? So let u equal x squared. So therefore du equals 2x dx. Okay. Let's see if this works. And then we're going to say let dv equal e to the minus 2 lambda x, positive value of x. She better like math as much as I do. <laughs> I don't think she does, but we'll see. Isn't it so funny? Like the, the year that I'm looking for the one is the year that like I get like 50 freaking thousand people saying let's let's go. Why is life so ironic like that? And so V is going to equal minus E minus 2 lambda X over 2 lambda. All right. So now we're going to say the integral equals, using the chain rule formula for integration, U V minus the integral of V DU, right? which equals U V X squared by that X squared minus X squared E to the minus 2 lambda X, absolute value of X over 2 lambda right? um, minus the integral of v du there you go so v du which will be because there will be another minus so that becomes a plus and it is 2x e to the minus 2 lambda x over 2 lambda like poetry what you want might be right in front of you. <laughs> well, I don't have an American passport, so unfortunately, <laughs> can't get to you. <laughs> That's funny. I don't have an I don't have a passport at all, actually, at the moment. But slowly, if you guys start signing up to uh, Patreon, at Gabsmacked, try and raise the uh, yeah the visa. Yeah. All right, so now we have that plus that, and then we can integrate this, and I already did that last time, because that's two by that, and we figured out that one, that one was zero, actually. Yeah, that was zero. So this part was zero, so here is the answer. Booty call visa. <laughs> that's terrible. Uh, so... That becomes, uh, where are we? That's If I put zero, that's a zero. And if I put infinity, that's a one. So it becomes one over two lambda squared, which is very cool. All right. That's, and I integrate that. All right. So I'm not going to bore you guys with the full thing. But in the end, the answer will be one. So therefore, x squared variance is 1 over 2 lambda squared, which is very interesting. Very interesting stuff. All right. So now what we want is the standard deviation because we're looking for the particle, remember? So to look for the particle, we want standard deviation, and which is that, and we'll get the variance first. So that's squared. Have a good day, my handsome prince. Anytime, my dear, you have a lovely day as well. Always lovely to see you drop in. Equals x squared variance minus the x variance all squared, which is 0 uh, Where are we? Oh, equals that minus zero, yeah, which equals one over two lambda squared minus zero, which, so therefore, just the standard deviation is the square root of this, which will be the square root of one over two lambda squared. Done. So now we know that if we're looking for this particle, 
we know once again that we know that it's centered at zero 42 <laughs> and and we know that we have an 86 percent chance of finding the particle within theta this way and theta this way right so that way and that way and that's the length one over two times the wavelength squared and that's where we will find the particle which is pretty awesome uh, like, well that's an 86 percent chance of finding it approximately 86 percent p of finding x 86 percent in here it solves that problem so now what do they want us to do find standard deviation which we just did and then sketch the graph as a function of x and mark the points which we've just done Alrighty. Alrighty. Let's show you what it looks like, my friends, if we sketch this wave. And here is the two dimensional wave psi squared. Check that box. And this one is now psi squared. And here is x. So that's the location of the particle. And the location of the particle, right, as we get closer to zero, the location zero, the chance of finding it gets higher and higher and higher and higher, and then it starts to go down and down and down and down as we move away. So clearly the particle is somewhere in there, right? And the height is at lambda, and the standard deviation, there it is, as we said. That's going to be done. So that they should be even, actually. Right? And we said that there's an 86% chance. So the chance of not finding the particle, right, or finding it on here and here, is going to be 100% minus 86, which is, um, it's roughly 16, but it can change. So let's do it on this one. Let's find out what it is. In this one, probability of outside is the integral, uh, and it's 2... A squared outside from standard deviation to infinity so that's the difference the difference is that we want the area here and that area is standard deviation to infinity here all the way to infinity which will be here right but obviously there's two of them because there's there and there's there so what we do is we say two times this is the chance and that's why we have two times that alrighty so equals uh, that and the wave function is e squared the wave function squared is e to the minus 2 lambda x um, dx and we know from calculating before uh, that the integral if we integrate this it's going to be uh, where are we um, uh, it's going to be 2a squared, and then the integral of that is minus 1 over 2 lambda um, x, sorry, not x, uh, e to the minus 2 lambda x, and the boundaries are standard deviation and infinity. Well, at an infinity, that's 0, and at standard deviation, that just goes into there, and and there's a negative, so the negatives cancel out. So, which equals 2a squared multiplied by, or over 2 lambda, um, e to the minus 2 lambda standard deviation. Why is it gone blank? What's going on? What's happening? Oh, the sun is going, so I might have to go soon. I'll probably go after this one. And we'll do the other problems later. All right, so that is that. Am I correct? Uh, I am correct. And hold on a sec. And we know what the standard deviation is. We figured that out. Standard deviation is right there, the square root of that. So if we put that in into there then we are going to get what hold on where are we 
uh, that into there, we know what A equals. We worked out A before. A was root lambda. So root lambda squared is lambda. Over, so these cancel out and become 1, which equals e to the minus 2 lambda. And theta was square root of 1 over 2 lambda squared. So 1 over 2 lambda squared. And it's the square root of that. So that's the answer there. And then that will cancel out, which will equal e to the minus. Now, um, 2 divided by root 2 is root 2. So that's going to be root 2. Uh, okay, so we're going to put root 2 here. And then lambda over root lambda is root lambda. So that's just going to be... Root, it should be root 2 lambda. Oh, the lambdas cancel out, sorry. Lambda and square root of lambda squared is just lambda. So lambda and lambda cancel out. So e to the root 2, which is approximately equal to 0 0.2431. So therefore, the chance of finding the particle outside of the main place, so here and here, is approximately 24.31%. Done. I think that's all we'll do for now. I might do some more later. Because the sun is going. So as we can see, oh, that sun is so good. As we can see, the chance of finding the particle outside of the main area, outside of the standard deviation, is 24.31%, roughly. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> Lovely to see you all. And this sun is amazing. So I'm going to go in and do some more work and have a look at this sunset before I cancel on you. Yeah, look at that. And up there is a plane. You can't even see it somewhere. And here is the beautiful sun. Alrighty, bye.